Now we change gears. Instead of looking at equations and how to solve them, we're going to look at inequalities. Now remember, very beginning of this course, I said that um, an equation is a mathematical sentence where equals is the verb. Now we're going to look at inequalities. And inequalities are also mathematical sentences. And the verb here is one of the four inequalities. Greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or less than or equal to. So the first thing we'll look at here to get ourselves started is properties of inequalities. Now what are properties of inequalities? Well, first of all, let me translate the word properties. Another way we might have put it now, now that we know a little more mathematics, we might just say this is basic theorems. And that's what these properties are. They are fundamental theorems that allow you to manipulate inequalities the way we do equations. What will we examine here specifically? Well, let me give you a format picture, OK? This is a picture with boxes. We will be looking at the following types of inequalities. When you have a box less than a box, or when you have a box less than or equal to a box. Now, of course, that second one translates into box less than a box or box equal box. And we will also look at the case where something is greater than something else, or something is greater than or equal to something else. And that, of course, also translates into something is greater than the other something or they're equal. So there you have, in sort of broad schematic form, the kinds of inequalities we're going to be looking at. In this segment, I'm going to talk about, as I said, properties, give you the basic theorems that allow us to manipulate these the same way that we do with equations. Things are a little different because we have these four instead of one symbols between the two expressions. OK, the first one. This one's called the trichotomy property. Fancy name, but you'll see in a moment that it's an idea that is almost obvious from what you know about the real numbers. Trichotomy property. And I'll write each of these as a theorem, because that's what they are. If A and B are real numbers, if you pick any two real numbers, then there are only three things that can happen in their relationships to one another. Either A is less than B, a is equal to B, or A is greater than B. I mean, that's it, folks. With, three, with real numbers, that's all that can happen. Now, I might point out here, just for the record, that this is not true in the complex numbers. Now, we won't have time to explore that, but that's not true in the complex numbers. In fact, there is no order in the complex numbers, which is a curious fact. All right, let me visualize this a bit for you, because I want to make sure you're clear on what we're talking about. A less than B means that A is to the left of B on the number line. A equals B means that they are at the same point on the number line. And A greater than B, whoops, almost wrote that incorrectly. I'll put it on the bottom, is when A is greater than B. So A is to the right on the number line. You have to be very careful with inequalities. You can't be uh, as unthinking as you might be with equations, because with equations you can move things back and forth. This you have to be very careful about the direction of the inequality. Now one case that is worth noting, when b is 0, we have these three possibilities up here. a is less than b, a is equal to b, or a is greater than b. If b is 0, what does that say? That say, it says that a is, is less than 0, a is equal to 0, or a is greater than 0. In other words, every real number is either negative, 0, or positive. Again, this is something that seems completely obvious to you. But it is a fundamental fact about inequalities that we're going to be using quite a bit coming up. So this is trichotomy. It simply says that one of three relationships between any two numbers, real numbers, must always hold. Okay, property number two. I'll give these all names. Let's call this the non-negative property. Again, it's a theorem. This is the non-negative property. It's one that you also should know from your experience. If A is any real number whatsoever, 
then when you square this number, you get a number which is greater than or equal to zero. Now, everybody knows from your experience that if you square a number, you either get a positive number or if the number is zero to begin with, you get zero. So this is just a statement of something that's familiar. I might point out something that you can observe to show you why this is true. Observe the following. If you graph the very familiar curve y equals x squared, and if you come over a distance a, left or right, then of course the height here in both cases is a squared. And so if a is a real number anywhere, then all this says is that the parabola's graph is above the x-axis. a squared is always up here. It's always greater than or equal to zero. This would be the y equals zero line. Okay. So there's a nice little picture. Of course, the square of a number is always positive or zero, is something that should be second nature by now. All right, further, there is the transitive property. Another one that will seem very familiar once I get it written out here. The transitive property. It says the following. It'll be in two parts. Very often we'll have uh, statements about inequalities in two parts because we have to consider the less than cases and the greater than cases. And they'll usually mimic each other. If A is less than B and B is less than C, notice that B is common here, then we conclude that A is less than C. So the A is less than the C and that makes sense because they share this B in the middle. And if I draw a little picture here, if I have A is less than B is less than C, going like that, then it's clear that A is less than C in the picture. There's no mystery. If I then write this out for the other case, I said there's usually two cases. This is the greater than case. If A is greater than B and B in turn is greater than C, notice the B is common in the middle again, then the obvious conclusion is that A is greater than C. There's A, there's C. And again, the picture certainly confirms it. If A is greater than B is greater than C, we have A here going downwards, B here, and C here. A is greater than B is greater than C, so A is certainly greater than C. So the transitive property says if you link up inequalities in the same direction, then you can jump from the first to the last and preserve the inequality. It's a very simple idea. Okay. Now let's look at what one might call the addition property. But I have another name for it here. The addition property. You might call this simply a horizontal shift. Now that's something we've studied. Horizontal shift. And here's what's going on. Let's just say for any real number C, the following holes. And go ahead and run a line here to try and keep this organized. First time, it will be for less than, and of course the second one will be for greater than. If a is less than B, then take that real number, that arbitrary real number, add it to both sides, A plus C, and you preserve the direction is less than B plus C. You see we've added C to both sides, and the direction has been preserved. Now why would that be true? Well, if you think about the picture for just a short amount of time, you'll see that no matter what C is, this is going to be a horizontal shift. Let me see if I can give you a nice careful drawing here. Suppose this is A and this is B and clearly A is less than B there. I'll extend my little B up there. If we have the case that C is a positive number, when you add it to both sides it's going to shift both numbers to the right. That is to say upward. So what we will then have is 
A plus C shifted up, and then B plus C shifted up the same amount, so the inequality still holds. All you've done is taken the original and moved them off to the right. If C is less than zero, then the opposite movement happens. If you have C less than zero, then the arrow goes the other way, and the A plus C, B plus C preserves the relationship, but is now shifted off to the left. So adding a number C to either side shifts it either right or left depending on what C is. If then we have the case where A is greater than B, then the result is similar. A plus C is greater than B plus C. Again, the same C has been added to both sides, and this is a similar picture. Okay, I won't go through it. The only difference is that you start out with A greater than B instead of B greater than A. And uh, you will have a shift left or right depending on whether C is positive or negative. So that's the addition property. If you add the same number to both sides of an inequality, the direction of the inequality does not change. And that's what you want to remember from this. Now there is another property or set of properties I want to talk about. We talked about addition. You might expect there's some sort of property associated with multiplication. First, I want to motivate it. I think by seeing a couple of examples, you'll, be, you'll see why the final theorem actually works. Motivation. Now here's what I want to do in these problems. I want to multiply each side. I'm going to give you some problems here as indicated, and once you've done that, write the correct resulting inequality. Okay, so we will analyze this for two examples, and that will suggest the next property. Okay, here's the first one. 3 is less than 7. That's given to you, and it's also clear. Want to multiply that by 2. And let me mar remark here that 2 is a positive number. It is greater than 0. Well, the solution is, let's do the multiplication on either side. And I'll write it out even. Since 3 times 2 is equal to 6, that's the left-hand side, and 7 times 2 is equal to 14, that's the right-hand side. Then, 6 is less than 14, left and right, and the direction has...